Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new video for the Machine Quilting Party. We have our rainbow log cabin quilt set up, ready to go. It's ready to be machine quilted. But you know, this is a really big quilt and you're probably really worried about being able to quilt it on your home sewing machine. So let's check out the machine. I'm gonna give you some tips for setting it up so it's really easy and it's not a strain to quilt a big quilt on a smaller machine. So here's my sewing machine setup. I'm out here in the crafty cottage and this is where I quilted my rainbow log cabin quilt. The first thing I want you to notice are the walls. So my quilting table is surrounded on all sides uh, except for the front <laughs> with walls and that stops the quilt from falling off the edge of the tables. I really, really love that because if the quilt falls off the edge, it's gonna immediately pull against you and you're gonna be constantly fighting and tugging it uh, to stop it from you know, pulling against your foot and, and jerking off of the line of stitching that you're doing. So if you can, no matter how your sewing machine is set up, if you can push it into a corner uh, or against walls, that would be really, really helpful. Uh, the next thing I wanna talk about is my sewing table. This is called a flatbed or drop down sewing table. And basically what that means is it gets your sewing machine down on a flush surface with the tabletop. So you can find this table on my website. It's called the Affordable Quilting Table. And it also has a custom cut insert that fits around your machine. So that way you don't have like big gaps here between the hole in the tabletop and your actual sewing machine. Now the machine that I'm using in these videos is the Bernina 1230. This is an older home sewing machine. You can still find them on eBay. Uh, they're wonderful machines, very sturdily built and have a beautiful array of feet that you can find for them, still compatible from Bernina. So I highly re I recommend this machine as a home sewing machine. This is not the only one that I own uh, because they're just so dependable. I can get them serviced once a year and they work great. And I really love them. I love the walking foot that's designed for these machines. I love the darning foot that's designed for it as well. So I do think it's a good choice. However, there is a very small harp space here. And that can be a little bit of a struggle when quilting a big quilt. But I promise getting the machine down on a flush surface, that really is the key because you don't have that hump of the arm up on top of the tabletop uh, that you're kind of pushing and pulling the quilt over. Instead, it's down on a flush surface so you can put the quilt underneath the foot and it just be sliding back and forth across the table. Now, I have expanded the table surface here. Uh, I did this with a big melanine board that I bought at the office supply, at the uh, hardware store, and we just cut out a shape for my table, and then I took the extra piece and extended it over here. So that way I have extra space here to the left side of my body. When I'm facing the machine, this is the left side of my body and I have extra space behind the machine as well. And that's really where you need the extra space. You really don't need extra space to this side, to the hand wheel side of the machine because uh, it's just not useful. The quilt usually doesn't end up on that side of the machine because it's kind of blocked by the motor. So really you wanna focus on building your table, setting up your table so you have more space to the the left side, more space to the back. And you can do that by you know, building a setup like I have or by just simply setting up two folding tables. You could set up a three foot by six foot folding table to the back. You could set up a three foot six by six foot folding table to the side. And that probably would be more than enough. And I know Lowe's, uh, Walmart, all of those places have really inexpensive folding tables that collapse down and you could just stash them in a closet when you're not using them. And I have several of those from many different quilting setups over the years and I still find them very, very helpful. We pull them out on canning days, whenever we have family over, we need a big table to serve everybody at. It's sometimes a really nice thing to have on hand, just some extra folding tables laying around. You can expand your quilting setup when you need to, you can shrink it back down when you need to. Uh, I do think that this is a worthy investment. And uh, rather than spending money on a much bigger, more expensive sewing machine, use the machine that you have right now and see if it will work. You know, see if you can get your table set up in a way so that it doesn't fight you. 
One last thing that you could consider doing, and that is going vertical. Uh, so uh, inside, I don't do this out here just simply because the table set up big enough, but in my house, I have a curtain rod hung over a window and I have a machine set up there. And uh, I use a bungee cord clamping system. And here's a picture of a quilt clamped up on that system. So basically it's just a bungee cord hanging onto the curtain rod. And on the other end of the bungee cord is a clamp and that clamp holds the quilt. Now, the one thing to keep in mind about any sort of clamping system is that you're gonna need to continually adjust it. So for every line of quilting that you do, uh, even as you are stitching, you're gonna need to stop and reclamp continually because as you move, you know, basically any area of the quilt, uh, you're gonna have to continually be shifting and repositioning those clamps so they're helpful. So that's still gonna be a bit of a stop and start. You know, there's not really uh, a, a magic bullet when it comes to quilting big quilts on your home sewing machine. My best advice for you is to try a variety of different methods, see what works for you. More than anything else is just power through it. You know, the hardest part of the quilt is the part that we're gonna get knocked out first, that's the center. Once we get the center of the quilt knocked out, everything's gonna get easier. So the one thing that keep, that keep in mind and then also look forward to is the fact that when quilting on a home machine, everything gets progressively easier the further out from the center that you get. So I hope that this video has helped you understand how to get your machine set up. Um, one last tool that I have on my machine here is a queen size supreme slider. This is a Teflon sheet. It's got a pink grippy side and an off-white really slippery side. And this I have set up here to the left side of my walking foot and it's off the feed dogs. And the reason it's off the feed dogs is when you have your walking foot on the machine, it's putting pressure down and you need those feed dogs to be putting pressure from the other side. So if you put the slider over those feed dogs, it's probably gonna get ripped. So don't do that pull it off the feed dogs, put it on the side, and when you're just getting used to using it, make sure to tape down the corners so it stays nice and secure. You can build up lint on the back side of a Supreme Slider and uh, so it won't be as grippy. Take it off occasionally to your sink and rinse it off so that way it stays nice and grippy and holds tight to your tabletop. But again, I can't emphasize enough, it's important to tape it down until you get used to the feeling of it so that way you don't accidentally stitch it to the back of your quilt. And that has happened to me and it wasn't very pleasant. So definitely make sure to try that out. It will just simply help the quilt to slide and glide over the tabletop a little bit easier. Take, you know, the goal here is to make the quilt easy to move. So it slides easily over the surface so the walking foot and the feed dogs can do their job feeding the quilt forward and making those beautiful, nice, even stitches. So I hope that this has been very helpful and you can see how I've set up my machine and tables. Uh, no matter what setup you have, no matter whether it's temporary and it's on your dining room table, it doesn't matter. I truly believe that you can quilt your own quilts, even large quilts like the Rainbow Log Cabin on your home machine. And I look forward to teaching you how. Now, coming up next, we're gonna learn how to stitch in the ditch and get the layers of our quilt secure. So I hope that you'll check that out and come back for more videos on the Machine Quilting Party. And don't forget to pick up a copy of the book, Explore Walking Foot Quilting with Leah Day to get the patterns that you need to follow along with this year's Quilt Along. We're gonna make the Rainbow Log Cabin, the Marvelous Mosaic Quilt, and the Prism Path Baby Quilt. And all of the patterns can be found in this book. You can check it out at leahday.com slash walking foot. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our videos on YouTube so you don't miss the next video coming out soon. Until next time, let's go quilt.